Hi, this is Stephen Brower. In Chapter 3, one of the topics we look at is uh, virtual memory. In Chapter 2, we saw partitioning memory. Um, first it showed fixed partitions, then it showed dynamic partitions, then it showed dynamic partitions with relocation. And all of those schemes that were shown in Chapter 2, for when a job is running, all of the pages or all of the memory that it needs to reference needs to be physically in memory. One of the concepts in virtual memory is that we can reference more memory than physically exists. So if this is our physical memory, um, if this is our physical memory, we're only limited to store data within this memory. But what virtual memory allows us to do is that we can use the disk as a way of sort of extending what the memory is. Now, first thing we do in terms of virtual memory is we split up the memory into these even-sized um, blocks, each one called uh, a page. Now, this for illustrative purposes only shows 16 uh, pages from uh, 0 to 15, and then we do have uh, the disk. Now, our operating system would be loaded, and actually really the kernel of our operating system would be here. Um, as other parts of the operating system are needed, it would be brought in, uh, but what this is illustrating here is the um, operating system taking up uh, a portion of memory. So let's say at this present moment in time, here we are, <laughs> and that the only thing in memory is the operating system, and now we go to start a job. Well, since all of these pages are free, if we start a job, then it can use as many of the pages that that job requires. So let's say we have here this job one, and this job one requires four pages. Um, well, since pages four, five, six, and seven were free, uh, then we allocate those to this job one. So here our page map table is showing um, for job one the page, the yes meaning that it's memory, and then this last column is the actual frame that it represents. Uh, we'll have a different video where we take a look at these other ones here, and that is whether it's been referenced and uh, modified. Now, what will happen is, as jobs start and take up more pages, then jobs end and some pages free up, um, the other thing that will happen is if a page isn't referenced in a while, it will get removed from memory. So what I want to just show right here is here's just a snapshot in time where there's three jobs that are running, job four, job five, and job six. And uh, as you can see that for one of the jobs, job four, one of the pages that it has is actually on the disk as opposed to memory. But now this job four, as we see here, has pages four, five, and eight in memory, four, five, and eight in memory, and then it has um, this page that's sitting here on uh, the disk. Job 5 has pages or 6, 9, and 10. Job 6 has 7, 11, 12, and 13. But suppose right now this job 4 is running and now it needs to reference the memory that is in this logical page 2. Well, at the present moment, this page is not in memory. So the end here, if you look at the page map table, it's not in memory. That means it is residing on the disk. So what the operating system has to do is then bring in this page into a free, um, well, a free page. And in this picture I have right here, these pages 14 and 15 are free. So all this has to do is, is just bring this in to memory. And so this is now showing that the page that was on the disk for job four is being brought into memory, put in a page frame 14. So now the page map table is being updated, saying that this is now in memory, and this is residing at 14. So this uh, intro to uh, virtual memory, we're just showing that uh, memory is broken down into these equal size partitions, uh, which here we call pages, and that those pages can either reside in the physical memory or they can reside on the disk. And then the page map table will indicate whether it is in memory um, or whether it's not in memory. If it is in memory, then the actual page where that resides.